Well, you know, Iranians have always been very notable and, and very famous for their hospitality and very warm-hearted and warm, uh, actually open-hearted and open-handed wherever you go. Another very important issue about Iran, especially when you travel to Iran as a tourist, is Iranian uh, souvenirs that you're going to take with you to your country. You know, sometimes you go to some part of Iran and you face to something which is made by hand. It can be Iranian carpet, it can be Iranian even rugs, which is uh, definitely made by hand. This is something that it is undeniable about Iran, you know, Iranian Persian carpet. Okay, another uh, probably are artistic, I can mention uh, artifacts that it is very interesting for you when you come to Iran to take with you to your country is Iranian handi handicrafts. One of the handicrafts here in Kariz, which is in Kiev, is many, many different beautiful necklaces or bracelets or even earrings which are made of shells, seashells, and sometimes of a stone too. Different stones like agate, sapphire, upal, and many, many others. And when you come to Kariz, don't forget, just go to one of these chambers, you will face to some beautiful necklaces, or, and I said uh, probably bracelets or earrings, which are made of these beautiful seashells and stone and don't forget to buy them and take them with you to your country as a souvenir for your friends and family. Some pictures and information which uh, shows that many scholars and scientists, you know, besides the typical people who usually come and visit as a tourist, but uh, many, many times there were scholars and scientists who came to this place and took probably a piece of the fossils of corals to their countries, uh, of course by the permission of Iranian government, to uh, just study and, and guess the date of these uh, stones or the fossils. And I heard that, uh, as I told you uh, probably a minute ago, uh, some fossils of a turtle, which uh, turtles, or probably it was a tortoise, that dates back to a million years ago. Just imagine, million years ago, which we are going to take some pictures from it and show you. Well, we are still in Kariz, this wonderful and mysterious place full of chambers. And in one of the chambers, we came to this place as a workshop. I'm not going to explain where we are and what we're doing here. The person in charge here is going to explain and uh, talk about it. Well, thank you for accepting our interviewing here. Would you please tell us uh, a little bit about where we are, what do you do, and what are all these things all about? Yes, first of all, uh, thank you for coming here. Sure. Uh, now we are in Kariz, mm -hmm. uh, a mysterious underground water source. Of course. It belonged to 2000 years ago and uh, it's developed by Mr. Haji Hussaini mm -hmm. about 10 years ago. I see. This part we are in traditional bazaar, uh, which we uh, make handicrafts mm -hmm. by shells. Which the we, shells from yeah, the island of Kish. Yeah, uh -huh. which we found on the um, on Kish Islands. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, we uh, make them and uh, the tourists uh, came here and they visit those uh, handicrafts and if they like they can buy them 
or they can have it. I see. Uh, besides the uh, things that you make out of shells, I could notice some potteries too. Are they made of here or other place in Iran? Um, you know, the story of this uh, traditional uh, bazaar is that uh, we're going to gather the other handicrafts of uh, uh, different Iran. city of yes here. Uh, some belong to Hamadan mm -hmm. and some other uh, belong to Kish Island. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. It is very interesting when you come to Kish Island, many, many places to visit. And then you come to Kariz, a wonderful, mysterious place to visit. And then because you want to take some memory from here, back to your country, don't forget to take some of these beautiful souvenirs made of shells from the Kish Island. So don't forget, this is Kariz and, uh, and the Kish Island. Thank you very, very much, sir. I wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, just imagine where we are. We are sitting in a, a very cozy and small uh, telecabin. It's a cable car that takes us to the peak of Tochal. We are riding this and I'm here with uh, our friend here, Ms. Hassanizadeh, who is going to talk a little bit more about the telecabin and also other things that you can please explain. Yes, uh, there are the tourist uh, station here uh -huh. for, we can, uh, uh, station two, mm -hmm. second, uh, second station, excuse me, and uh, there are a restaurant, a coffee shop, and you can take a rest if you don't want to go up. Uh -huh. But uh, their next next station is the uh, fourth station. So the station two is, is. Do you prefer? I mean, do you recommend this for those who come here with families, like children? Yeah. Time. I see. When they want to come back soon, uh -huh. yes, the station, second station is very good. I see. It's a small, but, but not. Uh, you have some facilities. I see. You can enjoy. Oops. This is like a cradle going up and down, you know. Uh, I hope we don't go to sleep by this cradle, you know, moving up and down. Uh, so this is the second station, right? Yes. And then from here up to the third and... Third and uh, fourth. Fifth. Fifth. But uh, just the fifth station is uh -huh. the station you can come in out. Oh, I see, yeah. I see. So in, in this station, which is the second station, we are just, just going to be checked and then uh, we, we, we continue up to the top. Mm -hmm.
Well, we are still here in Tochal, you know, the, the peak of Tochal, so cold and also blizzard here. Everywhere you can see snow. And it's so wonderful that we can see uh, a lot of uh, fog around here. You know, it's so foggy that you cannot even see probably about 15 meters ahead of yourself. And I'm here with Ms. Hassanizadeh, who is also with us and going to tell us a little bit about Tochal and uh, what other peaks we have around here and the hills, everything you can say around Tochal. Okay, uh, after the fifth station, uh -huh. we can arrive to the seventh station. Okay. There, there are uh, for ski, uh -huh. and uh, in the valley behind the fifth station, there, there is a big hotel and luxury hotel. When you go inside it, you can't imagine that you are in the middle of the snow and in the interesting, in very the, interesting. Yes, in mountain, and with uh, good facilities mm -hmm. and good uh, rooms and the other things. Okay. But a little uh, far from the hotel, there is a Tochal Peak I with the more than four, uh, near the 4,000. So from the seventh station here, if yes. we want to go to the peak, we yes. still have some more time, right? Um, about 40 minutes. Oh, about 40 Just minutes. 40 minutes, yes. And I think this is a good place for those who uh, th those who are mountain climbers, they can go from the seventh station yes. up to the peak, which is about 40 minutes. Uh, of course, 40 minutes yeah. for me is Hassanizade, not for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's good. But uh, during, in the summer, from the Tochal Peak, I you see. can go in the valley, to, you arrive to the villages. Oh, behind the peak? Behind the, yes, behind the Tochal. Okay. And uh, they are very good. And co in countryside, you can uh, have a good time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. in the garden with the fruit trees and the other very good villages. Of course not in the winter, right? No, no. no. <laughs> you, you'll be frozen if you go in the winter. No. <laughs> okay. Just in the, in the spring I with see. a good blossom I on see. the trees mm -hmm. or maybe in the summer with the delicious fruit. Okay, what you other peaks it. you can mention around okay. Tochal? The Tochal is a peak in central Alborz uh -huh. range. Alborz range is very long range in north uh -huh. of the Iran a, a little. I but see. Uh, a very good or high uh, peak we have in s central Alborz and eastern Alborz and western Alborz. I see. And uh, more than my maybe 20 peak, a bit more than 4,000 oh, miles. Interesting. You can use it, and it's good for professional climber. Okay, and each peak has its, its own name, right? Yes. Okay. For example, in the famous in West in Eastern Alborz, we have Holeno I see. and Sarekchal. Mm -hmm. They are famous, and maybe some climber know it. I see. And in Eastern, <coughs> in Western, excuse me, uh, Naz and Kahar. I they see. are famous, and in Western Alborz. We have uh, for rock climbing. Mm, also. Interesting. Yes. It's beautiful. Well, uh, as I mentioned, this is Tochal, a wonderful peak just adjacent to Tehran, the capital. And it's a good place for those who love uh, going to the nature and having uh, a little bit of time for relaxation or peace and so quiet. And especially at this time of the year that we have a snow blizzard and fog here in Tochal. At this time, the same time, you can take a flight down to the south of Iran to the perpetual Gulf of Persia and you lie down around the beach enjoy the sunshine and even swimming this is what we call Iran a lot of diversity full of every diversity you can imagine so don't forget to do this come here enjoy this place and uh, and, and relax in Tochal or even areas around Tochal thank you very much Ms. Hassan Izadeh we are going to have some other places so be with us and follow us don't go away we are shivering from the cold
part of Kashan. This is Bazaar. Persian carpet is not only, uh, well, many people think that carpet is only just for covering the floor, but <clears throat> not at all. It is not for covering the floor. It is a sign of Iranian culture, a sign of even Iranian religion, and the most important is culture. You know, you can see all the design and the pattern, they're talking to you. They're so alive and so boomy. It's, it's really interesting. And some people say that Persian carpet is a sign of wealth and investment also. It means uh, in the past, people who collected some money or invested some money, they tried to buy some kind of Persian carpet to save it. And day by day, it's not going to, be, to reduce. I mean, the price is always going up. And this is going to be a beautiful investment for any Iranian carpet. So if you enter to any Iranian house, you can see the Persian carpet. It's talking to you. It's so wonderful. The pictures are so alive, you know. I can, I can even feel it right now that somebody is, is weaving the carpet here. The smell, the touch. Mm. You know, Persian carpet can never be beaten anywhere in the world. It's really interesting, very beautiful. Wow, I can see a picture here. It's like a statue. Oh, look at that picture. It's so hard to just imagine how hard it was to sit down hours and hours and, and weave these carpets, especially Kashani's carpet, you know, from Kashan. I'm not an expert at all. I mean, I don't have any idea which one is, the, you know, more expensive, but I know all of them are wonderful, so wonderful. Hmm. I can, I can hardly believe that that picture uh, has been painted by hand. Uh, this is like a, like a drawing by hand. It's so interesting. He's talking that it takes about six months to weave this carpet. And it was woven by probably two people about six months. And, and the original material of this is, is from the wool. You know, the wool has been uh, grown here in the pastures of Kashan probably. And then it was, the, the, the wool was dyed and dried and was made like something as a masterpiece. You can see here by touch. It is really a masterpiece, really a masterpiece. Well, uh, I, I hope one day when I, when I got so rich, I'm going to buy one of these carpets, but not now. Well, uh, 
was a very beautiful and interesting place, Persian carpet. And uh, now I can see here, uh, right, right across from the Persian carpet, I can see the, the threads that are used to weave the carpet. Wow, wonderful. These are those colorful threads that I told you. These are used to make the carpet. Different colors and different shades. I guess, uh, uh, Salam. I guess these are, uh, you know, after they have been collected from the, they've been cut actually from the sheep, uh, uh, they are being, uh, they have been uh, dried or even dyed and then dried and then have been uh, collected here. And people who like to weave the carpet, they come here and they buy it. Hmm. Some of them are silk. This one is silk, completely silk. Very interesting and maybe expensive too. mesmerizing colors here from Iranian uh, clothes. These are made for making clothes. Well, so attractive and wonderful. Very beautiful. You know, when you walk inside the bazaar, the bazaar of Kashan or any other cities, well, let's talk about Kashan right now. You, you get a feeling of, you know, it's a rustic feeling especially people who are, you know, just going, you can see different kind of people, different type of people. And, and I myself will never get tired of uh, just walking around. Even the smell of the bazaar is so attractive, so interesting. As I already mentioned, you can find everything in this market, from clothes, and, hmm, I smell something here. This is so good. Well, right now I can smell wonderful aroma of Persian nuts. Well, these are sunflower nuts, and I guess this is watermelon. Well, this is sumac, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, sumac. Mmm, so sour. So sour and tasty. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, Persian nuts is one of the most important items that you definitely have to uh, buy and not only see, buy it. Persian pistachio, you know, from Iran. And dried figs, I can see next to it. And behind, walnut. Wonderful, wonderful. I guess these are, most of them are so uh, original, maybe from Kachan. Really wonderful, especially Persian nuts. <laughs> these are the beads, you know. These are the beads, different color beads. These beads are used especially in Iranian religious ceremonies, you know. They have, uh, they usually use it when they are praying in the Iranian prayers, it's used different colors and wonderful. Mm. And this is my dream. Maybe, maybe when I get rich, I'm going to once again come here and buy some of these jewels. It's so shiny, you know, they are brilliant and shiny. And I'm happy that my wife is not here, you know, if she were here, she would definitely push me inside and probably made me buy something for her. I would, actually, if I could. You know, uh, when you look at the people here, you can see different kind of people from different walks of life. 
rich, middle class, all kinds of life.